Okay, save. Uh, this is this is really wonderful. We got a Harris Hawk here that we're working with uh, this morning. She's a great morning light. And uh, she's going to fly back and forth. We get a chance to practice our skills at photographing yeah, a bird in flight. And she's gorgeous, too. Just a beautiful, beautiful Harris Hawk named Sable. She is your pretty girl. Dr. Bill Mater is the director of the Red Rock Desert Reserve in southwestern Utah and spends a lot of his spare time pursuing the sport of falconry. Well, Bill, how long have you been uh, studying birds of prey in general? Oh, decades. I started in the 70s. I had the opportunity to study Harris Hawks. I was very fortunate because it was something I kind of st stumbled into and no one else has studied them up until then. I spent five or six years studying really? them in the big Saguaro Palo Verde country yeah. in Arizona. But, you know, for me, it's about being out with them and when you're with them and you hear the, the wind going by and you see these Harris Hawks sail past just like two or three P-51s, you know, coming oh, off wow. like that. And you're just, you're opening up a door to nature. You're throwing it open and you're walking through there and you're experiencing things that few people ever get to do. It's a magical experience for me. And that's, that's what really attracts me to uh, hawks in general and nature in general. I just think that there, it's, it's a huge asset for all of us. You know, I think that's, uh, that's something that uh, these people that are photographing these animals are trying to experience. They're trying to get a piece of that walking through that door that you're talking about and experiencing just a little bit of, of nature on nature's terms. No, I think you're right. And they get a kind of a momentum from it. And uh, it's exciting. You know, when we were flying uh, Sable, the female Harris earlier, uh, people like the dynamics of having that bird go by them. Yeah. And it's like walking by a bobcat or something. It's just, it's indescribable in those pictures or something they can take home with them. Put them on the wall, come back to them time after time. and Put them in their wallet next to their kids. There you go. That's right. <laughs> Remember what it was like to be there. That's right. Well, thanks, Bill. Uh, it's been my great pleasure. to work with you. You do a fabulous job. Oh, thanks a lot. We appreciate it. Thanks for coming out. This is my daughter, Brittany. You know, working close at home allows me to spend a little time with her. Now where it's so overcast like this, will I be able to get the sparkle in his eye? Where else to go to get great photographs, close up photographs of a white wolf howling? I mean, there's only one way to do that, and that's with the <laughs> models. Yeah. The howl of a gray wolf can make chills run up and down the spine of anyone who enjoys the outdoors. That experience has been absent from many parts of the country, but is making a spectacular comeback at this time. Through the images of outstanding photographers and the work of conservationists nationwide, it's once again possible to look into the eyes of a wolf and experience for yourself what it feels like to be in the presence of wildness. Good job. Good stuff. Combo, combo. That male is a really large wolf. advantage of yeah, working with animal models obviously you're not going to get this close to a wolf I mean we'll go to Yellowstone and you won't get this close to a wolf uh, I hope not. yeah <laughs> you hope not exactly brought out the gray fox now 
This is a very small compound, so we're kind of hanging outside of this fence that's, uh, that's put around this, this cluster of rocks here so that we can give the photographers a little more room. And actually, the photo opportunities from outside of the fence are really good, too. Uh, this fence, of course, is put here to keep the animals in, to keep them from getting too far away, and to kind of confine them to the general area so that they can be worked easier around. It's just a chicken wire fence. When the photo shoot's over, they'll take the fence down, and it'll be like it wasn't ever here at all. You can see Rick in the background here. He's, he's the animal handler, and he's doing a great job of making Jack the, the gray fox move from place to place by offering him rewards and, and helping him to uh, to be in the right place at the right time for the photographer. He does a super job and really makes the photo shoot much more much more productive. Jack, Jack. He's also very entertaining to watch. Jack, Jack, Jack. Oh, <laughs> Brittany, one of the identifying characteristics on this gray fox is that black tip on his tail. In fact, this guy, he's got a black line going down the back of his tail. That's what differentiates this fox from a red yeah. fox, which has a white tip on its tail. After the session was over, Brittany got a chance to get close to Jack the gray fox and make friends with an animal that she had previously only had glimpses of or seen in photographs. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Thanks, Jack. So till next time, keep your camera ready to go and join us again on Outdoor Photo Adventures. <laughs>